What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, saints and angst? Welcome to Lactic Acid with Dom and Laura. I am one half of the dynamic duo. My name is Dominic Smith. Laura is not on this episode, so I am flying solo. This is our Olympic Trials Preview, U.S. Olympic Trial Preview episode. And it's a bit of a series because there's two episodes. This is the first one where I go over the sprints and the field events. And then Laura will join me and that episode will be released on Thursday where we recap the distance events in the mid distance distance events so we're going to be doing some big things on lactic acid when it comes to covering the olympic trials so please be sure to follow us on our social media platforms l tweet and then lactic acid with dom and laura on instagram remember road to a thousand followers we will do a special reenactment of the hidden valley scene from snl if that gets done by august so please be sure to do that please be sure to have your notification bells on social media on because we will be doing some instagram lives and talking about the meet giving our recap telling you what we think about it and we want to hear from you let's continue to grow this community and everything so it was a bit of a lengthy episode because we covered a lot of ground when it comes to the sprints when it comes to the hurdles when it comes to the throws went over all the events kind of gave you some well my thoughts what i'm thinking why i picked who i picked and then there's some caveats because we're not sure if you know say somebody drops out or somebody wants to focus on one event so listen it was an entertaining episode i appreciate each and every one of you love peace and chicken grease we will catch you next time and guess what i hope you enjoy the episode what's going on ladies and gentlemen saints and inks and welcome to lactic acid with dom and laura i am one half of the dynamic duo my name is dominic smith i am your co-host of this great show laura is not on this episode um she will be on another episode and i'm going to get to it in just 10 seconds but welcome to the show. This is a very special episode, a part of a very special series that we're doing. It is our Olympic Trials Preview Series, the U.S. Olympic Trials Preview Series. The U.S. Olympic Trials kicks off on Friday, June 21st, and it is a long event. It is nine days. It will last until June 30th. Obviously, there's a two-day period in between. That will be next Tuesday and next Wednesday. So listen, there's plenty of action. We're going to be doing a lot of things on lactic acid. Obviously, the preview show, but we're also going to be doing some Instagram lives and some different things of that magnitude. To get you guys going, we want to hear from you. We want you to be a part of this. This is going to be an epic Olympic trials because nothing... Well, let me say very few things are certain. That's the wonderful thing about it. That's the exciting thing about it. And we're going to talk about the sprints. We're going to talk about the field events tonight. So we're going to cover the men's and women's sprints and the field events. I'm just going to run through some things that I think may do a top three. Uh, probably will do a top three in all of them. And listen, I am subject to be wrong and I'm happy to be wrong. <laughs> it is okay. That's the beautiful thing. You can never truly guess what's going to happen on the day of the race, on the day of the event. So much in store. I have my notes as I'm following along. So listen, let's just jump into it. Let's talk about the women's hundred meters and that is going to be a race to watch because there's so many things to take into account there's so many wonderful names one of the things you have to take into account is the wonderful addition of these college athletes who will be competing um, I think it's not a wild statement to say that Shakari Richardson Shakari Richardson rather is the She's the favorite right now. She is the favorite. Um, everything that she's done this season has kind of shown that she had, you know, what some would call a slow start, start rather, um, came alive at free. And now she is rounding out into form. And listen, I she's the favorite. She is my pick to win. Um, and then you get two through three. Um, that's where things get a little tricky because there's a lot of talent. Number two for me is Mackenzie Long from the University of Mississippi, Ole Miss, won NCAAs in the women's hundred um, recently. Gosh, that was it felt like so long ago, but it was really the other day, the other week. And she's cooking with chicken grease right now. She is really confident in what she is doing on the track, and I think she makes this team. And my third pick, that has been the one that I am just not sure 
about because there's a lot of options to choose from when it comes to who is going to make this team. And for me, I'm going to be honest with you, it, it, as hard as it was, I am going to go Aaliyah Hobbs. I'm going to go with Aaliyah Hobbs. My honorary pick was um, Melissa Jefferson. And it wouldn't surprise me if either or. Some people may disagree with that. That is okay. I'm not mad at it. <laughs> I am not mad at it. But I will say this, regardless of who makes the team, Team USA is going to send out an incredible 4 by one women's 4 by one relay. Let's jump to the men. The men, I think, has a lot of intrigue too, but I think it's a little bit more, um, I'm not going to say that. I think the men, there's really no clear-cut favorite, so to speak. I think the two, obviously Noah Lyles and Christian Coleman, um, they've really, really kind of, they have two, you could say, different styles of racing. Christian Stark is among the best, if not the best in the world, but Noah knows how to kick it into a different gear that lasts 40, 50 meters. None like we've seen really since Usain Bolt, um, if I'm being quite honest with you, not comparing him to Usain Bolt. Um, but Noah, it will all depend on his start. I don't think he's going to have a better start than Christian Coleman. And with Christian Coleman, it's going to depend how much space can you get on Noah Lyles. If Christian Coleman jumps out and he has a race like he did in 2019 in Doha, where he won the world championship, I can easily see him doing something pretty special. Um, not saying he's, I don't think any American records are going to, going to get, you know, broken in this. But a 979 is not out of the picture. <laughs> I, that's just my opinion. Um, and so I'm going to go with Christian Coleman to win. I have Noah Lyles in second place. And I'm going to pick Fred Curley. I, I know, I know, I know people may have something to say. But I think Fred Curley makes his team. I think he takes a third and final spot. And I think he edges out Christian Miller out of St. John's um, down here in Florida. St. John Striders is where he runs. 9.93 is the time. He, he is a baller. I always say with these young phenoms, as long as they love the sport, I think there's a future for him, a big future for him. So we're going to send over a pretty strong relay team as well. Cannot count out Kenny Betnarik. Cannot count out Kampu Kenny. Um, so not counting him out, not disrespecting him, but those are my top three. Noah Lyles will come to second. Christian Coleman wins. Fred Curley third. And that could easily be Christian Miller or even uh, Kenny Bettnerick. So that is what we're rolling with for the women. I'm sorry, the men's hundred meters. We're going to go to the men's two hundred meters, where I think it's very set in stone one and two. I think Noah Lyles is going to win. I don't think, and I'm not even going to say that's debatable. Because I really think Kenny G is going to push him, or Kenny Bettnerick. I call him Kenny G because he's a straight gangster when it comes to running these 200s and these the consistency that he's shown throughout his career. He is a straight baller. I think that's going to be closer than people think uh, with Kenny because Kenny is primed and ready to run something fast. I could easily see Noah running 1945. 1943 maybe even you know in the high 193s and Kenny running you know 1949 1950 something close I think it's going to be close so I have Noah one Kenny two here is where it gets crazy Arion Knight haven't really seen him don't know what kind of shape he's in don't really know that's hard because I know what I've seen from Courtney Lindsay. 1971, he's continuing to get better, especially finding more confidence. So that battle for third is going to be insane. And I am going to give it to Courtney Lindsay. I, I, I can't believe I'm saying this because I love Arion Knighton and I hope Arion Knighton is on this relay team because he runs the turn I think he will be a great third leg for us, Team USA, on that four by one. 
And like I said, it's splitting hairs. And it's just, I haven't seen enough of them this season. So I'm giving Lindsay the nod, but that can easily be something different once it comes down to the nitty gritty. Women's 200. I have been back and forth on this. Gabby Thomas, I think, wins. I don't think it's even close. Here's where we have to kind of take into consideration. Where is Abby Steiner? Last, you know, we checked. She has raced a little bit coming off of an injury. Uh, word on the street was there was maybe a minor hiccup or whatever the case might be. But I think Gabby Thomas, that 400-meter strength, and then obviously running, you know, the 100, um, you know, she's not, you know, maybe what you would consider – where Shakari Richardson, Shikari, I'm so sorry, I keep messing up your name. It's very late tonight, um, but still mad love and respect to you, girl. It's just one of those things where I think Gabby is primed to run like 21.6-ish, 21.65. I could easily see that. But with Abby, I, I, I just don't know. I and mean, I know I'm back and forth all over the place, and I do apologize. Abby, I, I don't know. But what I do know is there's a law jam really when it comes to second place. I think Sha'Carri Richardson takes second place. Mackenzie Long ran 2183. I could easily see her making the team. But I'm going to say something that may, y'all may come at me, come at me. Laura's not on this episode. That's okay. Just you can, I could take it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big boy. I'm a grown man. I'm going to give the nod to Brittany Brown. I'm going to give the nod to Brittany Brown. I'm going to give the nod to Brittany Brown because Brittany Brown is somebody we don't talk about enough. She needs more respect. It's just, just as plain as day. Goes out. I think it was in Oslo. Lane 8 takes care of business. Nobody considers her. Lane 8 takes care of business in the Women 200 against a really talented field. You circle back around to what she did in 2019, where she won a medal, the silver medal in the Women's 200. Don't mess with it, Brittany Brown. I think she takes that third spot. So those, those are my picks for the Women's 200. I think she edges out Mackenzie Long and Tamara Clark. So this could easily be something different could easily see Abby Steiner work her way into that mold because she's still a baller. She's still great. Um, and it's not doubting her. It's just, I think that Gabby um, is, is kind of, she's primed for something big, but I will say this. If Abby proves me wrong and makes the team, I think she, she may surprise some people. Not winning. I don't think she wins, even though I think the women's 200. I think Jamaica, this is kind of going off topic, but I just have to say, I think Jamaica is going to be fine. I think Sharika Jackson's going to be fine. Um, Elaine Thompson and her is not running in the women's 200, so she's not going to defend her title. I think, I think Sharika is going to be fine. I'm really excited to see Gabby. But I do think there is a space for, I don't know about a USA sweep, but I think they, it wouldn't shock me if they took home two medals. And that's all I'm going to say. Jamaica, I love y'all. Don't come for me. Listen, I haven't had no good jerk chicken. So listen, put lactic acid up. Let's talk about the men's 400 meters. Actually, let's go to the women's 400 meters because this one is interesting too. Because we talk about Gabby Thomas, she's entering to the women's 400 meters, and I think there is a lot of intrigue there because I do believe, and I am not alone in the sentiment, if she ever dialed in on that 400, she, y'all not messing with her. I'm not saying she would beat Sid, but I do think she would be top five, if not top three in the world when it comes to that event. We gotta put some respect on Paul. You know, Sid shows what she can do if she decides to focus in on that. Fem Cabal, same thing. Um, but Gabby Thomas is doubling so far. Now, listen, I'm gonna give two different answers because I'm not sure it's going to be very hard at the Olympics to do a 4-2 double. It's the schedule's not conducive. I think the semis of the 400 is the same time of the first round of the 200 or on the same day of the first round of the 200. So 
I don't know if this is going to stick. So I'm going to give two different answers, just depending on if she drops out. But for me, Kaylin Brown, um, with with um, on the USA Track and Field side, is listed with Purpose Driven North Carolina Elite Track Club. So listen, she came out, popped out a forty nine one forty nine thirteen to be exact. Now, here's the thing: she was a part of that insane squad at Arkansas. So 49-13, just, just balled out, just an incredible runner. And I do think, as crazy as the sound, I think that's your winner. I really do believe that is your winner when it comes to the women's 400 meters. That is who I am rolling with. She's talented. Um, shout out to, to Arkansas because that was just – Absolutely insane. And then Rosie, um, the other runner, who could easily, you know, easily be in the mix uh, when it comes to making this team. I don't have her making the team this year, which is crazy. But I think Brown is number one. I think Gabby Thomas gets second. And I have Talitha Diggs making the team. If something goes down i still have brown first and by goes down if gabby thomas is not running i have talitha dick second but i'm actually going to say alexis holmes get that gets that third spot that could be we could talk about rosaline um you know from arkansas because she she's pop 49 seven before like it is it it just depends lena irby you know, uh, I think Isabel Whitaker is in this field too. So it's just so many questions. But as it stands, Kaylin Brown, Gabby Thomas, Talitha Dix. Now, the men's 400 meters, I, Michael Norm is winning. I, I, Michael Norm is winning. I think he runs, he goes sub 44. Maybe 44, I'm sorry, 43, 8, 43, 7, something. I just know he's winning. Um, Chris Bailey is somebody y'all really need to watch because he ran 44, 42, and he's continuing to get better. So I can't count him out. So I guess if I'm just looking at it and I've gone back and forth on this, Justin Robinson is somebody you have to take into consideration um, as far as second and third. But as it stands tonight, at least for me, my top three, and listen, I have to make sure I got it right in the notes, but I do have Michael Norman winning. I have Rice Deadman making the team. Um, and I have Vernon Norwood rounding it out. So it's just a top three. I could easily see Deadman and Norwood switching. I could see Quincy Hall taking maybe a spot from somebody and Chris Bailey as well from Tracksmith. So there's so much intrigue, but I, I'm going to stick with that. Those are the top three, Norman, and then you get down to the rest. So now here's where it gets fun. Let's talk the women's 100-meter hurdles. This is going to be an insane team to try to make. For so, There's so much talent on this. There's just so much talent. This is arguably the toughest team to make. There's some distance races that we'll talk about when Laura comes back on that are incredibly tough. This this is tough. I'm trying to tell you this is tough. I had a hard time trying to figure this one out. And so I'm not even going to explain it. I think Kenny Harrison wins. I have Nia Ali second. And I'm going to go Masai Russell. I, I really, and that's hard because Alicia Johnson, she's been on the precipice. Obviously, she made the team um, in 2022, and, and it just didn't go that well. It would surprise me if she's there. Tania Marshall would not surprise me if she was there. 
what if one of these college kids comes out? What if Grace Starks from the University of Florida, who is a remarkable story of everything she's overcome to win the NCAA championship a couple of weeks ago, what if she pops off? There's so many variables at play here and at stake here. Those are my three. I think Kenny Harrison is going to run something fast. I think there is a very good chance if she executes the race that she's capable of. Listen, remember, before you know Toby came along, it was Kenny Harrison who had that world record. Um, so I can easily, easily see Kenny Harrison dipping into the 12 twos, 12 threes. Everything depends on the weather conditions as well. Um, so we just have to check that out and see. But those are that that's my pick. That's my pick. Those are the three that I think are going to represent Team USA in Paris. Jump into the men's hundred hurdles. I think it's a little bit more set in stone with one and two. Grant Hallway is going to win. I think Daniel Roberts is going to push him. But three is where it gets fun because there are two athletes in particular, um, really three when you talk about, well, really four, if you're going to go like Dylan Beard. But, you know, Cordell Tench, we'll see what happens with him. But everybody remembers him from last year and just the remarkable things that he did. And listen, if he if he wanted to, you know, he could easily, you know, make the team. I don't want to say easily, but, you know, he does the field events, you know, as well. And he is listed on the list for the for the men's long jump. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if he made it. But my third, the one I struggled with, it was between Freddie Crittenton and Trey Cunningham. Trey Cunningham has all the talent in the world. You saw him at FSU, ran 13 flat like every day, basically every time he stepped out. But Freddie Crittington is cooking with fish grease in July. And it is hard to bet against him because he came so close last year, had a phenomenal performance at the World Championships. But I think think I'm going to get the edge to Trey Cunningham. I just think he's running with more confidence, and I think that he will take that third spot in a close one. It is going to be close outside of Grant Hallway. Unless Grant Hallway does something crazy like trips over a hurdle, and even if he does, I still think he's going to make the team. It is going to be close. It is going to be fun. So that's my three for the men's 110 hurdles. Grant Holloway, Daniel Roberts, Trey Cunningham, Freddie Crinton just gets nudged at the line. And if I said the men's 100 hurdles, please forgive me. Please forgive me. It is the 110 hurdles. Now, there's something a little bit more set in stone when it comes to the winner. And so this is our last uh, sprint race, rather. Then we're going to get to the field events. It is more set in stone as to who is going to make the team and the men's 400 meter hurdles. Nobody's going to beat Rob Benjamin. Rob Benjamin, he could fall. And on the track, when he falls, he could bake a cake, decorate the cake, put some icing on it, eat the cake, and still win. I'm sorry. Actually, I'm not sorry. Y'all know that I'm not lying. He he is that far ahead when it comes to the American men in that event. Here's where it gets fun. You have about three people, four people. You have CJ Allen, Trevor Bassett, Caleb Dean. I got to throw in Christopher Robinson as well. I think this kid, Caleb Dean from Texas Tech, who had a phenomenal season, 47-23, is going to make the team. I really do think he's going to make the team. I think C.J. Allen gets the last bid over Trevor Bassett. That is hard because, Trevor, I love you. You know you, my boy. And Trevor has championship experience, and I'm, oh, man. You know what? We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. We're going to go with it. Don't be surprised if Trevor Bassett makes the team. That's all I'm going to say. But Rob Benjamin. And I don't know, I mean, I could easily see him running like 46-2, 46-1 uh, easily. Or maybe, you know, he kind of holds it back because he doesn't need to do that. Rod can run 47 flat and easily make the team. I don't think he's going to be pushed that much, maybe pushed maybe in the early stages by early, maybe the first 150 meters, but nothing too crazy. So I think he 
easily makes the team slows up at the line, so it may not be that fast. But he makes the team, and then it's a battle between Caleb Dean, Trevor Bassick, and Craig Allen, or C.J. Allen, <laughs> Craig Allen, C.J., Dr. C.J. Allen. Shout out to my man, uh, C.J., who's come on the show before. Same thing with Trevor Bassett. Love, 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 all love, all thrill and no filler. But we're going Rod Benjamin, Caleb Dean, C.J. Allen. Now, the women's 400-meter hurdles is Sydney's show, and we're just living in it. That's just how it is. Debate your mama on that one. It really is if she wants to break the world record. I, I think so. Maybe she's not in the shape she is needs to be to break her own world record. But Sid's number one, Sydney McLaughlin Lavroni. I'm not gonna even talk about her. She's just on another level than anybody. Shamir Little's number two. Here's where I'm struggling. Jasmine Jones of USC had a phenomenal showing. Anna Cockrell, Delilah Muhammad. Delila Muhammad, the savvy veteran. Anna Cockrell, baller. Jasmine Jones, she just showed what she can do. I'm going Anna Cockrell to make this team. I am, that is my pick. That is my pick. I think she just, I think she's, I think she's coming along and it just feels like this is her time to make this team. She's obviously made a team uh, before, but I think she gets that third spot. And I think your women's 400 meter hurdles team will be Sydney McLaughlin, Lavroni, Shamir Little, who interestingly enough is entered into the women's 400. So if Shamir Little doubles, that that could change my pick too because she's run 40 um 49 six before. We'll 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 wait and see. We'll wait and see. So if Shamir little doubles, I think she makes the team in both. That's just what we're gonna roll with. And then Anna Cockrell rounds it out. Now let's talk about the field events. We're gonna go. Let's talk about the high jump. Let's talk about the high jump. Let's talk about the high jump. The high jump. There's some interesting, you know, things when it comes to um, who's going to make the team or the favorites or whatever the case might be. And so for me, Bastard Cunningham is obviously one of the presumed favorites. But she's definitely going to have some competition this year. And she's definitely going to have some competition when it comes to who can execute more so later on in the events. Looking at my notes here, there's a lot of people who I think if this could be entertaining. I, I I actually going to go with Cunningham to win, but the one that kind of tripped me up a little bit was Rachel Glenn uh, from Arkansas, who I think is going to make the team. Let me just let's, let's just say that. But I am going to give Cunningham the nod. I am going to give Cunningham the nod. It was really going between the both of them. Um, she gets the nod to make the team. I think Vashti is just her experience. Um, obviously, the daughter of Randall Cunningham, but she is a baller, a baller when it comes to the high jump. But she gets the nod for me to win the women's high jump. Rachel Glenn from Arkansas second. And I'm going to go Jenna Rogers um, from Nebraska. I really do think she's going to make this team. I think she's going to have a great showing, and I'm really excited to see what she can do. I think that for the men's side, it's a little different. Um, Javon Harrison, clear-cut favorite, in my opinion. And that is not to you know say no one is like, gonna test him i think shelby uh, McEwen is number two and i could easily you know see him winning i'm just saying it could be a definitely an interesting competition when it comes to like i said with the women's high jump who can execute you know more thoroughly throughout the course of the event tyus wilson also from nebraska nebraska i don't know what y'all are doing 
<laughs> when it comes to this, but keep it up, bro. Keep it up. So those are my three uh, for the high jump, which I am excited about. Heptathlon and Hall. Um, I think, I mean, she's one of the best in the world. Like it is, is no debate on that. Um, I think Charlie Hawkins obviously comes in second. I will say this for third. I know Michelle Atherley is technically, I mean, when it comes to her mark, you know, she has 6,465 points. For whatever reason, I, I don't know, it's in my spirit. Don't sleep on Annie Coots. I, I think Annie Coots can get to that third spot. I think Anna Hall, far and away, is not even close. I mean, from a point standpoint, she's 20. I'm sorry. She's 12 points away. She has 6,988 points. She's 12 points from 7,000, which is crazy. Um, Charlie Hawkins is 63, obviously, Michelle Atherley, but. I don't know. Annie Coons, I just, I, I can't explain it, but it would not surprise me if she took that third spot. So why not? And Hall, Charlie Hawkins, Annie Coons. Can't tell you why. It's just a gut feeling. Um, I think she's going to have a great day. And I think she makes that team. The men, I think, is a little bit more set in stone. Kyle Garland and Harrison Williams, they both have the same amount of points, 8,630. Um, I think Kyle Garland takes the win. Uh, he is a talented, talented. You saw that at Georgia. That's a big boy doing great things. So I think Kyle Garland takes the win. Harrison Williams finishes in second. And I think uh, Zachary Zemek, he takes that third spot. I think that is your team for the men's decathlon heath baldwin devin williams i think will make strong showings as well i am going to go to the hammer the hammer the men's hammer throw let's talk about the men's hammer throw it's going to be a tight one because there's some really really talented dudes rudy winkler is a baller Daniel Haw just <laughs> breaks the world record in the indoor trey knight is another baller as well I think those are your three, but I think Daniel Hall, ups, not even upsets, Daniel Hall wins, Rudy Winkler, he comes in second. I think it's going to be a close one, but Daniel Hall is on another level, and I think he is about to do some crazy stuff when it comes, not just to the Olympics, but I think his career is just booming. Um, and I'm really excited to see what Trey Knight could do to see if he can kind of pull into you know that third spot, which I think he will. He's going to be, you know, He's going to have some good competition. I think there's going to be a few people pushing for that third spot, but I am going to give it to Brother Knight. And then the women's hammer throw. Let me just tell you something. That is going to be exciting because on paper, yeah, it's fine. There's, there's winners. The women's hammer throw. Y'all don't forget. Do not forget that... Team USA swept the podium in Eugene, Oregon two years ago. I'm just saying. I think Brooke Anderson and Deanna Price. Deanna Price is the veteran. She has been around for a while. And she understands what it takes to win at championships. But I think Brooke Anderson has confidence going into this. She got her confidence. I don't want to say she got it back. But. She's cooking right now. That chicken is frying in the pan. That's that cast iron skillet energy. And I think she takes the win. I think Deanna Price is second. I think Janae uh, Cassavoid, um takes third. And I don't think it's going to be close. I think it's just those three, but I think it's going to be entertaining because I think they're going to throw some, they're going to throw that um, implement around and it's going to be exciting to see. Now, Let's go to the pole vault. The pole vault. Men's pole vault, I think is very, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I don't think it's, there's too much debate. Chris Nielsen's on another level. Sam Kendricks, um, the Army veteran, he has been consistent. He's been consistent throughout the years at major championships. I think he comes in second. And I think Casey Lightfoot 
is going to do something really fun as well. I think he could push Kendricks. Don't be surprised if Austin Miller gets into that mix as well. I think he can do something special too. Those are my picks for the hammer throw. I'm, oh, gosh, I am so sorry. The pole vault. Please forgive me. And the women's pole vault. I'll be honest. I was ready to say that there could be athletes to sneak up into the mix. No, I'm not there anymore. Katie, Katie Moon, as some would know her as Katie Najat. I think she wins. I think Sandy Morris takes second. And I got Bridget Williams in third. Sandy Morris has found something, and she's more and more confident now. And that's really exciting to see because everybody knows the talent that she has and how she's able to produce. But Katie Moon, listen, I cannot wait. I cannot wait to see Katie Moon. We'll see what Sandy Morris can do. There's some other. But Nina Kennedy versus Katie Moon, round two. Y'all, listen, all thriller, no filler. You know that's what we say on here. It is going to be exciting. Let's go to the discus. Let's go to the men's discus. I think this is set in stone as well. I have Reggie Jagers taking the win. Andrew Evans, I have him coming in second, taking that second spot. I have Joseph Brown taking that third spot. I think it's very, you know, cut cut in stone. Um, the one that I would love to see, just personal, I would love to see Turner Washington kind of come in there and kind of make some noise and kind of disrupt the flow. Anything is possible when you get to the Olympic trials. And so that's who I think is going to make the team, those three. Now, the women, the women has intrigue because remember, oh gosh, I keep getting Loggy to Saga Collins pulled off. I don't even want to say an upset because Loggy or Lalonga to Sanga, baller, 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 baller. But Valerie Allman is on a level that is elite. But to Sanga Collins is there too. But I have Val pulling out the win. I have Loggy taking second, Veronica Fraley taking that third spot who attends Vanderbilt did incredible things. Um, but man, I will say this. I think Log is going to push Val, not just in at the trials, but I do think at the Olympics as well. So please be sure to stay tuned to the women's discus. Hopefully the coverage is good enough where people can watch it, but that is going to be entertaining. I'm trying to tell you that is going to be a fun one to watch. It was last year. Um, and I definitely think it's going to be this year. So rounding through this, just a couple more. Let's go to the triple jump. Women's triple jump. Women's triple jump is going to be a lot of fun because there's a lot of talent. But I do think the top three are solidified. I think Couture Orgy, uh, Tori Franklin, and Jasmine Moore, who's with Puma, the Florida legend. Uh, Tori and Jasmine, I think they can be interchangeable. Honestly, I can see Jasmine winning. Uh, but I think Contour Orgy takes the win. I think Jasmine Moore takes second barely. And I do have Tori Franklin in that third spot. Don't really see anybody making too much noise when it comes to, you know, cause, you know, an upset rather, um, if you will. So that is my pick. When it comes to the women's triple jump, I think, like I said, it's very set in stone. Let's talk about the men, the men's triple jump. Donald Scott, I think, takes the win. Salif Maine, I think, is somebody to watch. Russell Robinson is also somebody to watch. I think Russell Robinson takes the third spot. I'm sorry, the second spot. I think Will Clay makes this team. I, in a perfect world, I just, Christian Taylor, this is his last go round. It wouldn't surprise me if Christian Taylor made the team, y'all. But I think Will Clay takes that third spot, and I think those are your three. I think Donald Scott has a fantastic day. Um, Christian Taylor, you know, he's been the face of the triple jump for so many years, and it's in great hands now. They're doing incredible stuff, but I think those are your three. Let's go to the long jump, and then we will talk about two more, and that's the men's and women's shot put. And then I'm saving the javelin because I am so excited for the women's javelin. 
Um, when it comes to the long jump, Johnny Brackett Jr. is somebody who really a lot of these college kids are are just crazy good. But I think Marquise Dendy is going to make this team. I think the order, it could be interchangeable. I do really like Jerion Lawson as well. So I, I'm, I guess if I'm going based off that, you can't even count out Malcolm Clements or J.C. Stevenson. USC has some insane long jumpers this year. Um, but I listen, you cannot substitute experience. Marquise Dandy has that. Jerrion Lawson has that. I have Johnny Brackens winning. I have Jerrion Lawson. I'm sorry, I have Marquise Dandy coming in second. I have Jer Jerrion Lawson taking the third spot. Don't sleep on Jeremiah Davis either from FSU. He is a talented dude. These collegiate jumpers are amazing. And if my only thing with collegiate athletes when it comes to the Olympic trials, have you played your cards right when it comes to recovery? If that is the case, you are poised for something special. So that is the three that I'm going with. Then women's, I think it's set in stone. I'll be honest with you. Tara Davis Woodhall, she's going to win. Uh, very entertaining on the track or when it comes to jumping. And then obviously what she's able to do with her social media platform. Quinesha Burks, I think, comes in second. Jasmine Moore rounds it out. Um, I could actually see that flipping. I could see Jasmine Moore, um, you know, taking that second spot. Quinesha Burks finishing third. So it's going to be entertaining the women's long jump just to see how far they can go. Now, shot put. That's my event. I'm just saying. Ryan Krause is going to win. We're not wasting our time with that. It's just if he wants to throw the world record. Joe Kovacs, I'm trying to tell you, Joe is stepping different this year. He's stepping different. Listen, I was at pre when you pulled off the upset and Ryan Krauser was, was mad. He was like somebody stole his fried chicken. But I'm really excited to see that battle. Joe, like I said, he has confidence and I think he's going to do something incredible. Um, So that is who I have top two. And then Peyton Otterdahl, I think he's going to put together a throw that's going to make that team. Ryan Krauser breaks the world record. We'll break it again at the Olympics. Joe Kovacs. And then Peyton Otterdahl, I think he takes that third spot. Women's shot put. Let me tell you something. That is going to be so exciting to watch. Because one thing you cannot do is count out Chase Ely Jackson. She is a baller. She did not have... You know, I, I'm not even going to say she had a bad season because she won the championship, but there's a lot of intrigue in this. I think Chase Jackson or Chase Ela Jackson wins. There's four names, four names, five names that it that's where it gets fun. Jada Ross from the University of Oregon. I think she makes this team. I think she makes the team. She's the champion, first collegiate athlete to throw over 20 meters. Maggie Ewan, Adelaide Aquila. Raven Saunders is back and Maya Lesnar, Brock Lesnar's daughter. I am going with Maggie Ewan because of the consistency that she showed throughout the year. But Adelaide Aquila, Ohio State OH, steps different. She's different, y'all. She's different. But I'm going to go Maggie Ewan that takes the third spot. All oh, that pains me. Um, but I can easily see if Ross has, you can't have a bad day in this event. You can't have a bad day in general. But this is the event you can't have a bad day. So I can easily see the team being Chase Jackson, Adelaide Aquila, Maggie Ewan, or Raven Saunders. Or I could even see, you know, Adelaide Aquila getting the third spot or Raven Saunders getting the third spot. Don't be surprised if Maya Lesnar you know, has a great day. So Jessica Wooder, somebody you can't completely count out. So those are my three, Jackson, Ross, Ewan. And then now let's go to the javelin. The men's javelin, I think is kind of set in stone. I like what I've seen out of Jordan Davis um, from Southern Connecticut State University. Yep, got that right. Uh, actually had not heard of that university. So, uh, but he comes in 
you know, to USA's with the leading mark. I think Curtis Thompson makes this team. I know that's crazy, but I think Curtis Thompson makes this team. I don't think he wins. And then I think Donovan Banks uh, is going to be somebody that takes that third spot. I know I rushed through that, but the women's javelin is my favorite. <sighs> if you didn't know, Kara Winger, who's a friend of the show, Kara, love you, girl. Shout out to my to her husband, Russ. Love that man as well. Kara retired, became a second place American record holder. Well, now Maggie Malone, Harden has it. And then all of a sudden, decided a couple weeks ago, ah, I just want to give it a shot. Let me see if I still got it. After taking the silver medal at the World Championships two years ago, comes back, pop 63-22. Olympic standard is 64 meters. Makes the team. She is going to win the Olympic trials. She is going to make the team, and she is going to medal at the Olympics. I'm I, listen. Debate your mama on that one. I'm telling you what's going to happen. Maggie Malone Harden. We love Maggie Malone Harden. She's an incredible human being. She comes in second. Ariana Entz has experience. Now Madeline Harris from Nebraska. They're doing great things in Nebraska. But I think Ariana Entz takes that last spot. Now, the two people with the standard will be, I think Kara will have the standard. Maggie Malone Harden obviously has the standard. So she's she's good regardless. Unless something catastrophic happens, she's going to Paris. The women's javelin. I think Kara Winger is going to do something crazy. And y'all, I am so excited. So listen, I, if you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you. I know this was a lot to try to take in. Don't want to make it too long, but we did go over all the field events. We did go over all the sprints. This is who we think, and this is who I think rather, will make the team. It's going to be entertaining. Remember, nothing is guaranteed at the Olympic trials. Anything can happen. If you haven't already, subscribe to our podcast, Lactic Acid with Dom and Laura. We are trying to get road to eight hundred, well, road to a thousand followers on Instagram. So you can find us, Lactic Acid with Dom and Laura, on Instagram. Subscribe, share this with your mama, your daddy, your cat, your uncle, your dog, anybody you know that wants entertainment. Share Lactic Acid with them. Please stay tuned to our social media platforms. L three is where you can find Laura. Lactic Acid podcast is where you can find me. Um, and thank you. Listen, it's the trials are soon and very soon. Part two will be out soon with Laura will be out on Thursday, rather. And you can be sure to catch that then. Until next time, love, peace, and chicken grease. We'll catch you later.